Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's been a while. Thought I'd do a little quick walk and talk. Uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about is um, just reminding people about what liberty really is. Uh, I'll put a link to some of my videos down below. Uh, some uh, a new uh, addition to my family here. <laughs> Real quick, off subject. Someone in the neighborhood moved, left four pigs. They came back and grabbed two. Someone else grabbed one, and evidently I inherited one. <laughs> You're not supposed to do that, okay? Pigs, when that pig was not wild, it didn't have tusks. But once it was let go in the wild, it started getting tusks, and it's going around. They all, when there was four of them, they were going around tearing up people's property and everything uh, so they can really root into the ground and really make a mess of things but uh so now i got a pig and soon to have bacon so uh, i've been dealing with that a little bit but back to what i was saying uh, this whole thing going around about the liberty issue uh, i've been spending some time with the lord i've been struggling with the flesh i've been struggling with cares of this world uh, physical pains um, and uh, I'm going to get right back into video making, get back to serving the Lord. Uh, I've had a brother encourage me. Thank you, brother. You know who you are out there. And I've had some other brothers uh, correct me. And uh, it's a good day today. But remember, I just don't know why people keep saying this. I have brethren out there teaching that there's three places of liberty. There's three parts to liberty. And it's like, no, there isn't. Okay, you won't find that in Scripture. There's only two things that have to do with liberty, and ultimately, liberty's talking about meats. That's the, we'll start about the first thing. Liberty, I'll link some of my liberty studies that I've done. The, ones, the, the big one was, I give me liberty or give me death. You've seen those people out there. You call them out on their sin, and, and uh, they come back with that attitude of give me liberty or give me death. You know, not give me God's word, not let's please the Lord. Or I'll die before I stop pleasing the Lord. No, it's give me liberty or give me death. And I gotta walk slower. <laughs> um, but that's one of the liberty issues is meats. Okay? It lifts, a brother in Christ basically spelled it out and it's just so easy. Okay, Liberty, it has to do with the Levitical laws. There's just no other way around it. It's something that's written down that says you are to do this and now you have a choice or you're not to do this, but now you have a choice. That's the liberty. Okay. And the two ones that uh, Paul talks about is meats and the second one is holy days and Sabbath days. Not holidays, holy days. Okay. You need to get holiday out of your vocabulary. Okay. Holiday is a man-made day, man-ordained day. That's what I did in my teaching on Brother and Sister Christ. Those who remember, the easiest way to help you remember the difference between a holiday and a holy day is holiday is a man-ordained day. It's not of God. A holiday is a God-ordained day, and it will be in the Levitical laws. Okay, Here's the day. Uh, you go back to the Old Testament. God says, you will... <laughs> Roosters. God will say, keep this day. So he'll give you the date, why you keep that day, how you keep that day, and the consequences for failing to observe that day. It's in the Levitical laws. Okay. See, the sun's behind me now, so I'm a little hope that I'm not all shaded. But, but brothers and sisters in Christ, you've got to remember that that's what the liberty is. The Bible keeps saying we're to be of one mind, we're to be of one mind. There is nothing, nothing that we can agree to disagree about in the Bible. Nothing. Okay? We're to all to be of one mind. And so I wanted to remind the brethren that you get people, when you start calling them out on sin, they start claiming liberty. Um, you tell them, are we talking about food? Meats? Well, well, no. Okay, then um, are we talking about holy days and Sabbath days? Well, no, 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 we're not talking about that. We're talking about, then why are you claiming liberty? Has nothing to do with uh, smoking, drinking, watching movies and TV shows, video games, uh, music, 
Okay? Liberty doesn't apply to that. There's no law that states, you know, you can do this and you can't do that. When you start getting into those areas, what it is is it becomes a flesh issue, a sin issue, and you're calling them out on sin, and what they're doing is they're trying to run to liberty. And when they do that and you say, hey, come on, the Bible says liberty is just responding to those two things, and they blow up on you and say, you don't know what you're talking about, from such withdraw thyself. You, rebu you correct them, you rebuke them, then you're done with them. It's that simple. Don't get beat up. And these last days I'm seeing, starting with me, um, judgment must first begin at the house of God. Starts with me, starts, goes to the brethren, and then to the lost world. Uh, I have people give me a hard time about that one, but that's just how I believe and that's what I read in Scripture. Judgment must first begin at the house of God. We're going to be judged first at the judgment seat of Christ. But I need to judge myself first. But I'm seeing a lot of people, starting with me, that are starting to fall away a little bit. You know, uh, struggling with sin more. They're starting to do 180s um, from their stands when it comes to sin. Not they're denying the major doctrines or anything, because they'll bring that in. Well, I, they still believe me. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people are starting to fall away as far as falling into sin. And that sin is getting in the way of their walk with the Lord. People are falling into the cares of this world. And it's getting in the way of their walk with the Lord. These last days, I've seen it. People are, I see brethren out there, they're losing their joy. They're losing their peace. And you sit down and talk with them, starting with me. And you say, well, what's going on in your life? And you realize, well, I haven't really been doing much for the Lord. I got that conviction. Someone, a brother in Christ, really hammered me with that. What are you doing for the Lord? And I said, lately, I really haven't made any study videos, you know. Uh, I'm out of my gospel tracks, and I don't know really, uh, you know, making excuses almost, you know. Uh, I'm getting with a brother in Christ now to make some of my own help. He's helping me make gospel tracks because um, it's hard to buy some because all the places I was buying them from, I can't get them from there anymore. I will not buy anything from Chick Publications anymore, uh, no matter how tempting it is because, like I said, some of their information is good, but they've gone into heresy and... I don't want to support them, and I don't want to be pointing brothers and sisters in Christ to them, especially babes in Christ. I don't want them around David Daniels. Okay. Uh, so what do I do? Just sit here and just use that as an excuse? No, I kind of got a kick in the butt saying do something about it. Make your own gospel tracks. Get out there. What are you doing for the Lord? Okay. Well, I'm really not doing it. Maybe that's why the joy is not there. Maybe that's why the peace isn't there. Have you allowed sin to come into your home? Okay. And I'm kicking me first. Okay. Have you have you become stagnant? Okay. Biggest thing that I see when I talk to some of the brethren is cares of this world, whether it's physical pains or financial pains, <laughs> if you want to say it like that. Um, I talk to them. It's like uh, I I'm screwing up. You know, people falling into sin. A sin will definitely get in the way, and that's the whole point of this liberty thing. Is people are falling into sin. It's ruining their walk with the Lord. It's ruining people's ministries. Um, it's leading people astray. It's destroying their joy. They don't have joy. They can try to claim they do. They don't. They don't have real peace. And they're misusing liberty. So, kind of wrap it back up. Uh, Brothers and sisters Christ, when someone says liberty, uh, it's those two items. A third item, someone, uh, brother in Christ, and I'll name names, Brother Brian, he likes to throw in head coverings. Honestly, I don't know why. Head coverings has nothing to do with liberty. Do the study on it. When, the, when Paul's talking about head coverings, oops, someone's driving up. <laughs> when someone, you always got to watch yourself on this road. They redid the road, people are going a little bit faster. So I'm going to walk a little bit faster. <laughs> um, the head, two types of head coverings Paul talks about is men, for women, is a man, and long hair. And that's not a liberty issue. Okay? That's a command from God. It's not a liberty issue. Um, now, I'm not going to go into it. We've, I've done studies. I've had brethren do studies about long hair. It's all about, for women, sisters in Christ out there, within your control, your choice, your power, you're to choose to have long hair. Something happens, grow the hair back out. I understand that. But the point is, is it's not a liberty issue. We're all to be of one mind. Women are supposed to be under the authority of a man, and they're supposed to have long hair. 
that's the two head coverings that uh, Paul's talking about. Right? So it's not talking about putting on a headdress where it's covering you down to your neck. That's a head covering. When it comes down to your neck, you can't see a face, a head, or nothing. That's full head covering. A woman wants to wear a hat. That's not a head covering. It's just a hat. It's covering part of the head, but not all the head. Um, but people have been trying to say, well, that's a head covering. Well, over time, Satan likes to take words and pervert them. So, um, one wants to wear a hat, fine. If she doesn't want to wear a hat, fine. If a guy wants to wear a hat, fine. If you don't, fine. That has nothing to do with liberty. But people will grab that and throw it into liberty. And I, honestly, I, I don't always agree with Brother Brian. I don't always agree with uh, all the brethren out there doing videos. That's just one of the things I disagree with. I just, because it's not in Scripture. There's no law, Old Testament Levitical laws, that says a woman is supposed to wear a head covering down to her neck. It's a head covering all the time when she's in public except for around her husband. I've, there's no Levitical law. I could be wrong. Someone can show me in the King James Bible, you know, maybe if I turn this around like that, hey, somebody. Uh, but yeah, some people will try to grab that for liberty. That's a liberty issue, you know. If you want to wear head coverings, you can't. it's not a scripture. I mean, like I said, liberty has to do with the Levitical laws. It has to be a law um, for you to have liberty now. Um, because liberty means you're being liberated from a law that's in place. I mean, that's just, I don't know why it's so hard for some people to understand, but it is. So there has to be a law in place that now you're free to do something that you couldn't do before. Or free to choose not to do something that you were commanded to do before. That's what li liberty is. You're being liberated. So, just wanted to throw that out there for the brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, I want to encourage the brothers and sisters in Christ to please, uh, in these last days, remember, remember, I've been doing a study. I might be able to come out with a study, uh, a video on this study, but looking for Jesus Christ. If you truly believe in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ, your life will reflect it. There's a lot of people out there, I'm realizing, that say, I believe in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ, yet you look at their life, and they're not living like Jesus could come back today. Some people fall away. I understand that, but I'm talking about you can really find these false converts and whatnot. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, came across the neighbor, had to stop the video. Uh, a lot of people, not a lot, but... There's people who use this road for walking. But the point I'm trying to make is, is how are you living your life today? You're supposed to live like Jesus Christ could come back today. Not tomorrow. Not yes. Not like, you know, it looks like he might not, he's going to come back before the end of the year. I've heard people say that. Uh, no, your attitude's supposed to be he could come back today. Well, if we do make it into next year, I don't know if we'll make it to the end of next year. Uh, no, our attitude is, is he could come back today. Am I ready for Jesus to come back today? There's Victoria. Am I ready for Jesus to come back today? Simple question. Well, no, there's still a lot of things I messed up in, and there's, a, there's some sin that I fell into and everything. That's where your focus is going to be. My fellowship with the Lord isn't doing so good. My fellowship with the brethren is not doing so good. Uh, you know, if he came back today, it would have been, you know, a month since I handed out a gospel track. Or laid a gospel track somewhere. You know, that's what you need to be focusing on. Okay? People in ministry, uh, and this is where I'm kicking myself, we really need to get out there, and we need to get back to the studies, and we really need to be standing for the Lord. We need to be kicking sin. Amen. You know who you are out there that I'm talking about, starting with me. Um, we need to be kicking sin. And not justifying it. Uh, we need to get back to encouraging the brethren in these last days to stay strong, to stand, put on the whole armor of God. We need to stand in these last days. All right? Stand, stand, stand. Don't be part of the falling away. I'm thinking, I'm talking to some brethren, I'm still looking on this study. The falling away, I'm looking into it, and it seems like more that the falling away, a lot of it I'm seeing is People will, won't will turn from major doctrine. First thing they turn from is their stands on what's sin and what's not sin. That seems to be the biggest falling away. People will be turning their back 
and doing a 180. One minute, smoking cigarettes is bad. It's a sin. You're defiling your body that's supposed to be a temple for the Holy Ghost. And the next minute, they try to justify cigarettes. They still believe in all the major doctrines, but they start trying to justify sin. They start doing a 180. And when they start letting, and I'm just using that as an example, it could be, I can go through the whole list again of sins. People, everyone has different addictions. Some people might be like, I never was addicted to cigarettes. I was never addicted to cigarettes. But there's other addictions. There's other sins that you can let in your life that you do struggle with. But people are letting it in and then they're justifying it instead of repenting and having godly sorrow. And it's going to mess you up. And the next thing you know, that's when you start seeing people fall away from major doctrine. Because in order to keep their sin and the life that they're living, which isn't the life of Christ, they've got to turn their back on major doctrine. So they turn against the gospel and stuff. But so just because somebody hasn't turned against all the major doctrines, I believe, doesn't mean they're not part of the falling away. They could be at the first stages of the falling away. Giving in to sin. Uh, and trying to justify it. And I, lately, I've been oblivious of what's been going on with the brethren. And I've been oblivious of what's going on in the world. Had to get up to date this last few days. Uh, with all the riots and everything that's going on. And still trying to figure that stuff out. Um, but, uh. Yeah, don't be part of the falling away. First stage is when you see people starting to turn from their stands on what's sin and what's not sin. The Bible clearly defines what sin is, okay? And people say, well, does, it, does the specifics, okay, it's saying from all appearance of evil. Is it evil? Well, yeah, but the Bible doesn't say specifically, I can't, is it evil? Staying from all appearance of evil. Put no wicked thing before thine eyes. Is it wicked? Well, some parts of it is. That cigarettes, it can be, it can be. But there's some medical, blah, 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 and yeah, yeah. That's wicked. Get rid of it. Something's coming between you and the Lord. Get rid of it. All right. Oops. Sorry about that. Hopefully you didn't get sick. I've had people say that it bounces too much when I walk. So I've, that's why I haven't been doing a lot of walking talks, but I'm trying. Um, lately. But, uh, yeah, brothers and sisters in Christ, just remember the liberty issue. We're getting to the top of the hill. Remember the liberty issue is it's Levitical laws. It's those two things. Okay? Holy days and Sabbath days and meats. That's where we have liberty. And we all are to agree that there's liberty. You can choose what you want to observe, what day you want to observe, and you can choose what um, meat you want to eat. Okay, we're all to be of one mind, time and time again. Remember that. Don't fall into the trap of trying to use liberty as justification to sin. All right. Make sure you always keep looking for Jesus Christ is coming. Right? Looking for Jesus, going back to what I said, maybe I didn't get it all the way in there because I had to cut the video. Liber uh, looking for Jesus Christ. You say that blessed hope. I, I'm, I, I'm into that blessed hope, and I'm looking for Jesus Christ. I've come across people who say they're looking for Jesus Christ to come. I just want them to come back today. I want, they've made a total mess of their life. And they're looking for an escape. There's a difference between brethren. We're sitting here, and we're looking at the lost world. I'll get to There it is. We're looking at the lost world, and we're vexed by it, by their hate for the real Jesus Christ. You know, their hate for the truth. And we're just so vexed by this world and having to live in it. That's one thing. But you making a mess of your life and your solution is uh, just, Lord, come, Lord. Come get me right now, Lord. That's the solution. Just come get me right now. Uh, no, that's not the solution. The solution is you need to go to the Lord. Fall on your knees. Repent. Pick up your cross. Follow Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, help me. I've made a mess of my life. I can't clean it up. I can't fix this. Tell me what I have to do. You might still have to live with some of the consequences of your actions. Okay, If you live by the flesh, you shall die. That's there. But you go to Jesus Christ. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. But you got these people. Hey, I believe in the... I'm looking for that blessed hope. I believe in the pre-time of Jacob's trouble catching away the body of Christ. Their life is a complete mess. And you look at them and it's like... 
Do you really believe that? If you did, you'd be focused on the today. Jesus could come back today. So what are you doing about your life today? It's a day-to-day -day thing. That's why it says pick up your cross daily. It's a day-to-day -day thing. And I just want to remind the brethren, and I'm kicking me first, that we're supposed to make sure we're carrying our cross every day. That we're looking for Jesus Christ to come back every day. All right? So I'll say this again. Uh, grace and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And my love for you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.